Hi guys, welcome back to the Techno Andrew channel. I'm trying a bit of a new thing this time, a um, bit of a video diary, I guess, a um, bit of a take, uh, taking you along for a ride um, to talk about how I'm going to build my new Lego combat robot. You'd have seen me ramble on about my previous robot, uh, Pegasus, on the channel, which is my pneumatic flipper. But for this uh, new robot, I decided to do something a bit different for a change, which is a crusher. Why a crusher, you might ask? Well, um, obviously, at the moment, in robot combat in general, the meta is definitely spinners, kinetic energy robots. While those robots are brilliant, they cause loads of damage, they're really exciting. Um, I've always kind of wanted to try something a bit different, uh, mix up the field, I guess you could say. That's uh, one of the reasons why I did the flipper before, and now I've kind of done that and wanted to try something else, and the crusher seemed to fit the bill. Particularly for the style of crusher I want to build, there's a particular robot, or I guess a family of robots, that's inspired me and that's the crushers built by the Cooper family, uh, Robo Challenge. Um, basically, ever since I saw their first one, uh, Spectre, at King of Bots in China, I absolutely fell in love with the design and the concept, really. The modern equivalent of Razor, just this really powerful crusher that can actually do well and dominate the field. And, and as well as that, the, the robot just looks gorgeous, both Spectre and Quantum. Fantastic pieces of engineering. So, to make a Lego version of that, um, I've kind of, I'm kind of drawing back on one of the things I quite enjoy working with, which is the LEGO pneumatic system. Obviously the real crushers um, for Quantum Spectre, they use a hydraulic system. You can't really do hydraulics in LEGO, but I, I know pneumatics um, basically because of all the stuff I've done with Pegasus and other stuff. So I thought uh, pneumatics would work quite well as an, an equivalent system to go into Quantum. So, it's currently January of 2023, and uh, where have I got to with the project? Um, I've actually been working on this for a couple of months already, um, particularly over Christmas. And I've started basically putting together some of the CAD design, and I've also been prototyping a few of the different systems that I'm going to be using inside the robots, basically to see from the outset if they're going to work or not. So, this is one of the first things I put together for the robots. It's the um, compressor for the pneumatic system, or at least a, a sort of test bed for it. It's quite fundamentally different to the compressor I have in my pneumatic flipper. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, with a flipper, you basically want to release and transfer loads of energy at once. So you have um, a bunch of these air tanks to store up a, a sort of larger volume of air at high pressure. Whereas for a crusher, we're basically just um, going to be compressing the air on demand, just enough to fill up the pistons to move the thing. So I'm using the sort of much smaller style pumps that um, are kind of actually really designed by LEGO for use in compressors. And so if I get this going, you can see that the pumps are going at quite a nice speed. If I close this valve here, you can see um, the rate at which it's um, building up pressure. Ah, yes, <laughs> I thought that might happen. So you can see it went up to about 40 pounds per square inch there or just under three bar. And at that point, we've got hoses popping off. Um, that is gonna be a problem for Quantum. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna deal with that yet, but I'm thinking I might have to make some sort of pressure relief valve, because obviously I don't want this happening in a battle because that'll just render the whole crusher useless. Following on from the compressor, um, one of the next things to think about was the control of the valves, which control the um, pneumatic system. Now in the flipper, I had a separate motor doing the valves um, as opposed to the one doing the compressor. Um, that was mainly because I just needed the extra power to operate both systems. But I thought um, for my new robot for the crusher, I thought it'd be nice to just have one motor doing both actions. The valve needs to be able to move a certain amount and then just stop whilst the compressor keeps going. And so for that you need a slip clutch. Uh, Lego does make these um, sort of purpose-made clutch gears which I could have used but the trouble with these ones is um, the bit which moves in the middle is still quite stiff to turn and I was struggling to get that to move the valve whilst also allowing the compressor to move freely so what I've come up with here is to use these connector pieces there isn't much torque needed to make this slip so it works a lot better and then I've just got some gears here which make sure that there's enough force still to move the valve itself. So if I get this turning, 
can see that this valve here is moving the short distance and then stopping whilst the motor still goes. Once I played around with those little test pieces, the next step really was to start um, actually fleshing out the design of the robot itself, particularly the main frame um, for the um, crusher. Obviously, if the frame of the robot um, isn't designed properly, then all you're going to do is start tearing yourself apart rather than actually inflicting damage on the other robot. So to make sure I was getting the pieces in the right place, I literally just opened up MS Paint and put this diagram together. Even though I could kind of visualise where the pieces needed to go in my head, it was just surprisingly useful to lay it out and just see it all in one go. Uh, once I'd done that, um, the next stage then was to start laying out bits of Lego, as you can see here. The frame around the outside is um, the size limit I'm working to, because uh, in the, uh, the UK, uh, the UK live scenes at least, uh, we have a size limit of a 32 stud cube. That was my easy way of working out the size and shape of the robot. You can see that I've used one of the uh, newer, much larger pneumatic pistons for the um, crushing weapon. One of the most important parts of the design is the um, positioning of the pivot points for the crusher. Um, so you've got the main pivot there, um, the pistons attaching to the frame and then to the arm, and obviously the position where the uh, teeth are as well. I can close it to make sure it's um, biting down far enough and that the force of the piston is being used to the best effect. So once I played around with those little bits and bobs to um, prove those concepts work, um, the next stage was then to start putting them together in CAD, uh, working out how they fit together, um, before I really start de detailing all the outside and stuff. And now I've got to the stage where I've got a prototype pretty much ready to go, um, so I can start ordering the bits for it. So I'll just take you through that now. So we've got Bricklink Studio open here, and when I start putting a model together in CAD, Generally the first step is to start just placing all of the major components in, things like the motors, the battery, the wheels, and bits for the weapon. You can see right in the middle here, um, I've got these four plate pieces and that's representing the size limit, just like the real parts I was just showing before. So that shows how much space I've got to work with. So you can see originally I was actually going to use the power function as train motors to power the wheels, really because I was thinking I'd like to get it nice and powerful so it could zoom around the arena. In fact, uh, eventually I got rid of those in favour of the large motors. You can also see that I've got um, completely plastic wheels here. Um, the reason for that being that I want the robot to be able to steer very easily. Um, and basically, when you've got four-wheel drive, they need to be able to skid to turn. So I didn't want um, any problems with that. And you can see that there's a chain connecting the forward and back wheels, just like the real one, actually. Just further afield, you can see I'm starting to think about the different frame pieces that I might use um, whilst I'm designing the model. And um, over the back here, <laughs> you can see there's loads of little, there's little parts here which are all pointy. And uh, that's because I was thinking about what parts I might want to use for the teeth of the weapon. And eventually, just these uh, standard Technic style teeth here are what I eventually went with. So once I got a good idea about which parts I was going to use, um, I then started building up the frame of the robot um, based off that kind of prototyping exercise I was doing before. Another quick change as well was um, I discovered these larger wheels which are available, which are still solid plastic, um, but uh, I think they'll help to make the robot look more like the real Quantum. And also, it will effectively gear up the drive a bit um, by having a larger diameter of wheel. One of the next big challenges really was working out how I was going to put the weapon mechanism together. So you can see here, I was going through quite a few different versions, kind of orientating the parts in different ways, um, just to sort of work out how to cram it into the space available. And eventually, this is what I came up with. So you can see I've got these main big black frame pieces here. So the force of the crusher is going to go straight through basically the middle of this assembly. So I had to design all of the kind of gears and pumps and things to kind of go through the middle of that. And here you can see the finished design of the prototype for Quantum. So I've managed to squeeze all of that mechanism inside the frame now. I've got the sort of first prototype head design there to attach all of the teeth, pistons, etc. I've worked out how the uh, wedge at the front is going to go together. So this main flat piece is an upside down base plate. And then it was quite tricky fitting these pieces on the side so that they were level with that front piece. I had to do some sort of quite strange uh, Technic connection there, but hopefully it works out. On the drive, you can see I've got the chain there, 
which has now got a tensioner in the middle. That's to make sure that um, the chain isn't drooping down below. And because you've got the two different sizes of wheels, front to back, that also means you need different sized sprockets on the chain. And it just so happens that LEGO recently released the 20 tooth gears um, without the bevels, which work very nicely with the 24 tooth ones on the back. To address the issues of um, the pressure getting too high and the hoses starting to pop off, I've now got this arrangement in the back here, which is effectively our pressure relief valve. I've got one of the pneumatic valves hidden down in the bottom there. The uh, lever of that valve is then connected to this very small piston, and the idea being that um, we'll have rubber bands um, connected to this piston too. So the rubber bands will keep the valve closed, and then when the piston gets too high, the piston will of course then extend and open the valve to relieve the pressure. Something I still need to finish really is the self-writer. So I've got this uh, random piston just kind of sticking out here at the moment, but on the other side I've now got the um, additional valve in place which will control the self-writer and then that's just got a uh, power functions medium motor sat down there controlling the valve via some gears. So this thing's certainly looking more like a robot now and it's about time I started putting some real parts together. Now I got to that stage, i um, just spent the last week or so gathering up all the bits so I can build the prototype. Uh, thankfully I already had quite a lot of the parts in my um, existing collection, particularly the um, electrical parts which would have been quite expensive to get fresh now that um, power functions has discontinued. And I was able to then put in the orders for the other bits I needed on BrickLink, um, they've all come off through so I can start building the prototype now. Okay, this is um, the first ever test of um, the crushing weapon. I've built the frame up, um, basically the minimum amount of stuff that's um, for the weapon itself. Got it hooked up to a simple pneumatic system here with a simple hand pump. So first off I can demonstrate the uh, crusher just moving there. Move it back like that. And now I'm actually going to test the weapon for the first time ever, actually putting some load on it. I've got the pressure gauge here just to check where we're getting up to. Let's give it a shot. Okay, that's the maximum amount of pressure we got, to, got up to there, and looks like nothing's breaking at least. Looks like the area towards the base of the pistons might be the axles under quite a lot of strain there. I think also how the teeth are mounted could probably be improved because I think those might be getting a bit dodgy there. But overall, it seems to have held up reasonably well. I'm not hearing any sort of massive creaking noises, that's always a good sign. If I release the pressure now, yep, that's going back up. As it didn't do uh, a huge amount of these boxes, I wasn't quite sure what to expect really with that, but uh, there we are. I call that a reasonably successful first test. Obviously we haven't really seen it do much crushing yet, but um, we'll come on to that I guess.
So it's now mid-February and um, I've just spent the last few weeks building a prototype and uh, testing to see how it works and um, I'm pretty pleased actually how it's turned out um, after a few different tweaks and things um, that I've found out during testing. So probably the most obvious vis visual change is I've now got the self-writer. took a few attempts to get it to work properly but um, just about does the job now. Otherwise the um, sort of main chassis and drive went together pretty much as expected. Uh, one major change I have made on that front is um, I've now got rubber tyres on the front. It was driving around okay but then I realised that if it's all plastic wheels it's basically going to have no grip once you start sort of ramming into other robots and particularly for a crusher you need to make sure they're getting right up into the jaws in order to crush down. Keeping the plastic wheels on the back now um, which allows it to still skid around and turn pretty well um, and most of the weight is on the front wheels anyway so that works out quite nicely. One final change I've made on the final build which uh, isn't quite easy to see is um, I've changed how the compressor works slightly so originally I had three of the uh, small pumps in a row on one crankshaft and what I found in the end was that having three pumps driven off the one motor was just causing too much friction and it was actually slowing the motor w way down and you could tell the motor was under quite a bit of stress. Um, so just taking one of the pumps out and having just the two pumps um, going alternately just seems to make it run a lot nicer. So now that uh, the mechanical design is pretty much there, I know it works, the final stage now really is to design in CAD um, what the final look of the uh, robot is going to look like, particularly adding all of the armour around the outside, swapping out some of these parts for maybe some nice shiny ones on the head. After that I'll be able to order the final bits and build the real robot.